Make no mistake about it, an eraser is a student's best friend. Whether it's attached to the top of a pencil or on its own, only an eraser can quickly rub out an error. White erasers are made of flexible vinyl, while pink erasers are made of synthetic rubber. In 1736, a French explorer observed South American native Indians using a certain tree resin to make bouncing balls. He brought this resin back home, and before long, Europeans discovered it could rub out lead pencil marks, hence the term rubber. There was just one problem. After a while, rubber would rot. That dilemma was solved a century later by one Charles Goodyear, who developed a curing process to prevent rubber from rotting. A lot of ingredients go into making a simple pink eraser. Carefully measured fillers, accelerators, curing agents, oils, coloring, and the main ingredient, synthetic rubber. They start by putting a batch of rubber into a mill. The rubber passes repeatedly between large heated rollers. They throw in any defective erasers from the last production run, recycling them into this new batch. Then they add sulfur as a curing agent, accelerators to help the sulfur do its job, and red coloring. They blend everything for five to 10 minutes until the mixture is the consistency of heavy dough. Next, vulcanized vegetable oil. That's vegetable oil treated with sulfur, then regular vegetable oil, then calcium carbonate as a filler. When the color and thickness are just right, workers remove the rubber, which by now is hot and soft as a result of all that milling. They leave it to cool and harden at room temperature for about half a day. When the rubber's ready, they cut out large squares, each weighing between five and eight kilograms, depending on the thickness of eraser the client has ordered. The squares go into a steam-heated press to cure for about 20 minutes at 163 degrees Celsius. The pressure compacts the rubber, while the intense heat hardens it. They trim off the excess, then submerge the hot rubber squares in cold water to stop the curing process. To make erasers that erase both lead and ink, they cut beveled strips from two batches of rubber, one pink and one blue. The blue contains pumice, which gives it that extra abrasiveness to erase ink. They pair up each pink with a blue to form a two-color strip. Then it's into the steam press. After 12 minutes, workers remove the trays, trim off the excess, and submerge the strips in cold water to stop the curing process. Then an automated machine chops the strips into pieces the size of erasers. Now back to the all pink erasers. The rubber squares come out of their cold water bath and go through a machine that cuts strips with beveled edges. Then chops the strips into erasers. From there, the erasers drop into a giant barrel. Workers throw in some talc to prevent them from sticking together. Then they set the barrel spinning for three to five hours. As the erasers tumble against each other, the abrasion rounds off their edges.
The last step is printing. A machine stamps each eraser with the company name and the model number. It's not the rubber that gives the eraser the ability to erase, but rather the vulcanized vegetable oil that's in it. That's what makes the eraser crumble when rubbed on paper, taking away the pencil marks with it.